Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Michael from Borneo Marine Research Institute, uh, University of Malaysia Sabah, in from Sabah. Okay, uh, today I will talk um, about the first report of seagrass boring bivalve, Zasia terrarindi in Malaysia water. Okay, uh, as we all know, seagrass are actually a food source for various uh, organisms. Like the leaf is uh, most uh, grazed by mega herbivores like turtles, dugongs, and it also uh, grazed by the herbivore fish like rabbit fish, parrotfish, and we also have the meso grazer, which are the isopod and amphipod. While there's some um, finding that uh, some uh, organism is a uh, detrovores, which are the polychaete and the isopod borers, and uh, normally they are bore into the shell of the Posidonia oceanica, and they are feeding on the uh, dead plant tissue only. Now, all this are uh, focusing on the above uh, ground biomass, but there's less uh, inve investigation into the below ground biomass. And from the literature review, uh, we can find that there's actually a, a rhizome uh, boring organism, uh, which are the Zasia zenkezwisi. They bore into the uh, zostera and uh, phyllostatic uh, seagrass in temperate water, and this only reported in uh, Russia, Korea, and Japan water. So, what is the rhizome? Uh, what is this rhizome borers? So this is actually is a boring bivalve, and they actually is uh, from the bivalve which are normally we known as a clam mussels, but uh, this very unique family, uh, Teredinidae, they have uh, modified themselves to adapt into this niche, uh, where the shell is uh, modified into the drilling tool compared with the bivalve, which are normally used for protections. And the body is uh, elongated like the worms. So normally, if you find them, you might thought there's a polychaete, which uh, when I first found that, I also thought it's a, just a polychaete, maybe mistaken into the rhizome. And uh, they also have a pair of siphon and pellets. And normally, they are called shipworm of the term termite of the sea because they feed on uh, wooden structures, such as ship, uh, pot, wooden pot, and they cause a lot of economy damage. And this organism, uh, although they feed on the wooden material, but they can't digest it. So there's a associate associate community of bacteria inside their gut help to break down all those wooden material. So uh, in uh, this study, I was, uh, we are de trying to determine is this boring bivalve occur in the tropical seagrass species such as uh, Anhalus and uh, uh, Simodosia. And if it's present, and how much is the occupancy across the seagrass meadow and its impact on the seagrass growth? Okay, uh, this uh, is the study site. So uh, my study site is uh, at uh, Borneo, which is from Sabah. And the island is the Gaya Island, which is the east coast of Kota Kinabalu. And my study site is at the West, uh, east coast of the islands, where there's a lot of uh, seagrass patches over here. Okay. Uh, to investigate this, uh, we have conducted the sampling period during the June until September of 2016. A, a plot of 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters of seagrass was dug uh, randomly across the seagrass meadows. And those seagrass are used for my main uh, restoration project. So the seagrass is not like we throw away. And the seagrass shoot and the rhizome will exam examine for any presence of the boring bivalve. So uh, the key of the present will be identified by the calculus tube from the, uh, the rhizome. 
and also some uh, calculus tube inside the rhizome. And this picture uh, from the left, you can see that in the dot, this is the calculus tube that emerged from the uh, meristem point, the connection between the rhizome and the leaf. And sometimes the tube is encased by the living leaf tissue. So it's sometimes very difficult to spot that in the field because there's just only small opening there you can observe. And another key is the calculus lining tube which are occurring inside the rhizome. So this picture is a crop section of the enhalus rhizome. And those seagrass that have a uh, boring bivalve are kept, are kept inside the husk marine tank in the Marine Ecology Research Center, which are my uh, project collaborator. And those dye specimens during the collection are preserved in Itano. And this specimen, we are done uh, some molecule uh, genetic work uh, last year. And uh, the boring bivalve, only one key identification, which are the pellet size and shape. While uh, because the shell, we cannot use it, it's very inter and intra species. So, uh, tunnels have been compiled, everything, and have been used uh, since then. Just only the pallet for the main identification. And the pallet and the shell was uh, observed under the scanning electron microscope as well. So, these are the result. And from about a uh, hundred shoots of inhalers, we we collect, there's a 12 uh, individual we found. While in Simodosia serrata, among 400 shoot, there's none. And from Simodosia rotundata, there's uh, four individual. So the percentage of the occupancy is about 12 and 1% each. And this is the photo of the boring bivalve which we collected. So from here you can see this uh, shell valve, which are used for the boring. Uh, for the boring. While here there's a pair of siphon and pellet. The siphon normally have some red orange pigmentation, uh, pigmentation. and the individual that we have found is a range between 1.5 to 9.5 centimeters. So uh, the length is very uh, depend on the seagrass species. Okay, this uh, photo is show the, the calculus tube that's found emerging from the rhizome, and uh, below this is the calculus nailing tube. The cross section you can see here. Well, here this uh, uh, lining tube that we extract from the rhizome itself. So you can see it, it's the white transparent uh, lining and this lining actually helped the boring bivalve to move uh, along their tube because the friction between the rhizome will damage the body itself. Okay. This one is the microscope picture of the pellets and the right hand side is a SEM image so you can see the pellet this is about 1.5 millimeters and the shape you can see is slightly longer okay. and this is the picture of the shell valve Okay, from the top right hand side, you can see from the uh, shell valve, there's some um, uh, rich tooth. And below one, this is the magnified uh, image. And here you can see this are uh, using for the drilling purpose. And for the leaf allocation rate, uh, the seagrass with boring by valve is about 0.2. 2.2 cm per day, while the healthy seagrass is 0 0.73 
centimeter per day. Okay, from the morphology of the pellet, we can decide that this is a new species because the pellet is narrow and longer, while the previous uh, the Zasia Zenkewiski is narrow and short, which are more like diamond shape. And last year, my partner have do the, have did the molecular studies uh, using the D oh, DNA uh, small 18s and last 28s, and we have confirmed that this is a new species. And boring by uh, primary feed on rhizome material only, and the boring actually uh, disturb the nutrient distribution and the transport between above and below ground. So this somehow might disrupt the growth rate. And from the growth rate itself, we can see that there's a reduction of almost 70%. And after a period of time, the seagrass shoot is die. And this, uh, just to illustrate, so some you think that if the seagrass shoot die, so how about the boring bivalve? And in this Simodosia rotund data, we found that the tube actually is longer than 50 centimeter. This indicates that actually they can migrate to other shoot through the rhizome network. Okay, okay. Uh, the distribution uh, for the, this new species is found in Anhalus and Simodosia, and the distribution is wider than we thought. And we have some sighting in Thailand and Papua New Guinea. And there's another new species that we found in Thalassia in Philippines as well. Uh, those will be in the publication soon. Okay. So uh, for the conclusion that we can say that uh, this boring bivalve is a potential parasite in the seagrass. And it may be a hidden vector to control the mortality and also in the seagrass conservation and restoration effort, we might need to take it into consideration. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael. That was an interesting talk. Um, any questions? Hi, thank you for the talk. I ask, uh, do you have some evidence if this animal is feeding uh, with the seagrass itself? If this parasite uh -huh. is feeding with the seagrass itself, if it's eating the seagrass? Uh, they are feeding on the rhizome material only. Because uh, Kishayo... Okay, uh, Kishayo, it, 1986. Actually, she did the uh, isotope uh, analysis, and it found that the boring viva just feeding on the rhizome material, while uh, sheepworm, the other genus, they bore into the wood, but maybe it lack on nitrogen contents, so they sometimes feed on the phytoplankton as well for the nitrogen input. But for uh, Zasia, no. Great, thanks Michael, we might move on.